It's Farsintia food. Hello, Farsintia food. No, your show Tiriera Alta, Scorchuko. Greetings. Greetings. Are you Yael? No. I'm Pleiadian. Hey. Can you give me a shorter nickname so I can uh, relate to you? I have not given you my name yet. Oh. I was speaking to someone as we were coming through. Ah, okay. My name is Escorts. Escorts. At course. At course. Close enough. At course. <clears throat> I am from the Erin planet. Yes, thank you for coming. Do you might mind? have called someone from there. I am not sure what the reasoning ah. for calling us was. Okay, uh, I, I'm recording. Do you mind being recorded? No. All right. <clears throat> Yeah, I just wanted to learn about Pleiadian life on, on error. And there so are many different cultures, just like on your planet. Mm -hmm. The culture that I live in is hundreds of miles from the hybrid area, which you probably know most about, or at least that's what I would assume. Mm -hmm. We are in the larger cities, mm -hmm. and we do the greater work for the planet. Mm -hmm. The largest cities are all connected, except for two that are on the other side, that are in a, a slight quandary about who they represent. And so until they find out their own personal identities, we cannot be a part of it it would be too confusing. Mm -hmm. They either would join us or not. Mm -hmm. But right now, my culture, the one that I live in at this present time, is full of technology and full of discovery. Our peoples are very happy in the sense that they are satisfied with what they are receiving from era itself, the governments, if you will. Mm -hmm. We work on privilege and education. There is talents that are not considered intellectual, but are considered very valuable, such as music, and things of this nature. So therefore, some with these kinds of talents and artistic, etc., will gain privilege through their work in this area. I will gain privilege and honors and acceleration through my work with education and business. Now, that is just a very small portion of our culture. My family life is much different than other places on ERA, as you might guess. We have a, a tight family union. We are allowed to marry more than once. We are n not... declined any kind of relationship and it is a very free and open society. Most meals are spent together because this is traditional. Not only traditional, but it has meaning for the culture. We have to do our conversations at least once a day over at least one meal. This way it continues to bind us. A binding ceremony every six months is part of our culture. 
and the family will be born together once again. It is a wonderful thing, and we do not take each other for granted. We celebrate each one's talents and performances and are equally happy for one another. What is it that you really are searching for? I do not think that an arbitrary statement of our culture or description is going to be satisfying for you. Thank you. Um, is it true that, uh, I just heard that story recently, um, that Pleiadians actually came from Orion through Earth. So basically Orion first came to Earth and then Orions came to Earth and then to Pleiades. Some of us came that route, and that is true. There are other parts of our civilization that came from the Orion area and have mixed with us because we were so mm -hmm. similar. Mm -hmm. But yes, there are some of us here that are originally from the Pleiades as well. Oh. Our ancestors from Orion actually, if you go back into history even farther, were some had been star travelers from the Pleiades many millennia ago. Yeah, I'm talking about ancient history. In ancient yes. History, I... That's what is, I am speaking of. <clears throat> so the main path was from Orion to Pleiades directly or through Earth? Some of it was direct and some of it was through Earth. There were more than one exodus. Uh-huh. And when, the, when your ancestors were on Earth, which historical period was, was that? Would it be before Atlantis? Uh, just before Atlantis, yes. And actually, we were there at Atlantis at some point afterwards, but we did not stay. Thank you. Um, so how do you look, uh, do you, what, what's your height? Uh, like what's your height distribution on, on era? There are many different heights. My particular height is about six point six foot four inches tall, a little larger than human, but not much. Uh, which race would uh, resemble closest the uh, race of Aaron Pleiadians? Which, which human earthly race would resemble um, your, 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 your people? Those from the continent of Africa Mm -hmm. Many of those have the same structure in the face. The color may be slightly different, but we do go into dark shades mm -hmm. and greens and silvers and blues, it, depending on the chemical atmosphere, the chemical makeup of the of the planet in certain areas changes the skin color. Mm -hmm. So yes, around Congo would be some of the greatest examples. Mm -hmm. The central portion of Africa. Mm -hmm. um, and the height distribution, what is average height on, on on era? Since there are several different species, I suppose you are talking just about native errands. Okay. The average height is actually larger than me, 6.7, 6 feet 7 inches. Mm -hmm. How about um, other races on, on era? 
There are some Yuyil, there are some Fandorian, there are some other species, of course. So their heights vary between four foot, four foot and seven foot. Uh huh. Uh, can you describe Fandorians a bit? Are Fandorians. They... Mm -hmm. Well, uh, similar to Octorians, the Fandorians are shorter. All At right. least a certain portion of their species are. Uh, are they related to humans at all? We have never done that DNA test. But yes, there is some Fandorian in some people on your planet. No, I mean, do they look like humans at all? What do they look like? Facially, a little bit, but not very much. Body-wise, more. The body looks more human than the, the face, although the body is small. But the organs' positions are very different. Uh -huh. Also, the brain is divided into three portions and not into two. Uh -huh. uh, what uh, Earth species would they be more related? Are they bird-like? Fen Fendorians and Octorians look more like your Japanese and Chinese population. Oh, so they at least look like humans, right? They're not birds, right? Are they birds? They are not humans, but that is the closest on your resemblance table that I can find. Uh -huh. So they're not birds? No. Octorians and Fendorians are not birds. Okay. Fendorians uh -huh. are short. Octorians have more of a triangular body um, with the broad shoulders and the small waist. Uh huh. The Fendorians, on the other hand, do not have quite as triangular. They are more square in the body of broad shoulders and just go straight down and a more of a, a, a turn in toward the, the legs. Mm -hmm. It's hard to describe. A picture would do better. Um, that's okay. Thank you for describing at least uh, because we, we, we talk about them a lot, but we have very little understanding how do they look. So what color, are, what color are Arcturians? Are Arcturians? Octorians are more orange and green. And Fendorians? Fendorians have many colors, and as well as, as the Octorians, but the uh, Octorians have the orange color, which the Fendorians do not have. And they have the, they both have a rather silver shade or a shininess of the skin. Mm -hmm in some places. There is a place above the ears for the Pleiadians, right about here, that there is a symmetrical, shiny place, which is actually very handsome. Okay. So now, you the, Pleiadian, uh, the uh, Fendorians have a similar kind of shininess on the sides of their heads. Okay. Now, they, they do not have the orange color. They have darker shades than the Octorians. Okay. As I was mentioning, they can be dark like the Africans, but they are also lighter shades as well. And some of those shades are in the green and blue categories or in the deep reds. Uh, all the... All of this, all of the above, are, are you guys all in the same dimension? We are in the same, well, no, actually we aren't. We are fourth dimensional in Pleiades. Mm -hmm. The Fedorians and the Octorians are fifth dimensional. Mm -hmm. But we see them many times in the fourth dimensional because they can come back and be seen in the fourth dimension. They cannot live here permanently, mm -hmm. but they can live here long periods of time. Okay. So, you, have you visited Earth? Personally, no. 
I have studied Earth in some ways and find it very interesting mm -hmm. and very curious, but I have not been. How much you, your, your people know about the Earth in terms of culture, like uh, population culture? What is known about Earth? What's the information? Most of the information that we know about your cultures are coming from the larger cultures. Mm -hmm. So, such as the people have gone to England or different portions of the United States and Canada mm -hmm. and South America. And so, finding the different cultures and the different ways people live is interesting. We have found that within the last 20 years, there is a greater closing of the gap, if you will, of cultural differences in mm -hmm. some places, mm -hmm. especially South America and places that are getting technology in faster, more efficient ways. Uh, wonderful. I, my, I still don't understand uh, how much I, how, how much are informed about the Earth? So how many of your people have visited Earth? Oh, hundreds. Hundreds. But not recently. Okay. There have only recently been about 30 because oh. they are not allowed to appear as humans. Okay. They are, not only, they are only allowed to be in the fourth dimension and do their studies. Studies are much greater when they can interact with the people. Learning is much better. How but, does, okay, continue. But in the last 50 years of your country, 57 to be exact, we are not permitted to come physically. Okay. How does the four dimensional earth look like? The fourth dimensional earth is interesting because it does reflect the third dimension in many ways. It has many of the same attributes as the third dimension. A lot of hybridization qualities still exist in fourth dimensional earth. And so therefore it is noted that the hybrid, hybridization that was given and seeded through the millennia is still very evident when you move to the fourth dimension and the fifth. There are some fifth dimensional elements of the earth at this time as well. I, I have very little clue about, what is the population of fourth dimensional earth? The fourth dimensional earth is the population is very small. I do not know the exact number, uh, but there is, is less what, than a million. Okay, less than a million. What do they Correct. do? Do they live or are they visitors? They live there. Uh, what culture are they? They are different cultures. That is just the point. It is hard to, they are all over the planet, even though they are only a million or uh, perhaps slightly more, they populate different places for different reasons and live out their cultures in their own ways. Are these humans or else? They are, some of them are. Was About they Okay. About 20% are actual fully human. And who are the rest? What's the dominant race on four dimensional Earth? There are some mostly Yugil and Pleiadian. Ah. Are they, uh, are they technologically advanced? In some ways, yes. Are they They're advanced, but yet. They seek um, connection. That is the best word. So is it? They are not connected with some of the other portions of the galaxy is because 
they choose to advance first and not communicate at this point. So it's a not galactic culture, it's a isolated culture? Yes. Weird. But um, it has some galactic overtones, of course, because of the people and species that are there. They bring their own thought processes. But it is a wonderful place to develop. They are, that is what they are doing. They are developing the planet in the fourth dimension. Ah. Do they have a government? It is a global government. Mm -hmm. Because they are advanced, they can communicate one with another very easily. And they can transport one place to another very easily. So yes, it is a, a worldwide government that is working very well because they each understand their differences. Excellent. Are they permitted to speak to us? To me? I would imagine they are. If they choose to do so. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, what's, how do they call the, um, the fourth dimension Earth? What's the name for it? Oh, they have given it the name of Terra-ha. Say again? Terra-ha. Which means the next evolution of Earth. Hey, yay. Okay. So they are progressive. Yes. Terra Ha is the next evolution of the planet. And they will accept the waves of uh, ascension sometime from now. They are helping as much as they can, but of course they are involved in their own societies and do not help as much as they once did. They are waiting for those and there are those daily that come into the fourth dimension from the third. But that will happen in a greater amount in over a hundred years of your time. So what's the rate of uh, humans popping into the fourth dimension ascending? Very slow at this point. Uh, can you it's probably one every 12 days. Oh, it's, a, it's substantial. There is some progress. So yeah. the, do, they, do these humans disappear from third? They will go, and the ones that are disappearing mm -hmm. are the ones that have very little contact with society. Mm-hmm. But there are some in the big cities that are disappearing as well. So if a person pops in into the fourth dimensional Earth, Terra Ha, do they have to disappear from the third dimension or they kind of bilocate? Well, let me describe how it works. Okay. It takes at least 24 hours to a month for them to change uh, physicalities uh -huh. mm -hmm. from one density to another, uh -huh. depending on how advanced they are. Mm -hmm. Those that are very advanced will only take a 24 to 48 hour period to move from one dimension to the other. But for the most cases, it takes about five to six days for the average third dimensional person to move into the next dimension and disappear from the earth. So the disappearance, how does it look? Is it controlled? Is there other guardians they who will, guard that process? They realize what is happening because they have been planning for it all their lives. Okay. For many, for many of them, they have been seeking the transference from third to fourth dimension all of their lives. Okay. And so therefore, when it starts to happen, they know what is happening. And therefore, they go into solitude. Okay. Is it, an, it happened. is it an assisted process or it's just the person does it by, by themselves? They by themselves. <clears throat> they go on their own. 
And when they appear in a four-dimensional Earth and Terraha, what happens? They have to be acclimated. It takes several days in fourth-dimensional time for them to acclimate to the fourth-dimensional density. It is very difficult for some of them because it, they are used to such a stranger density mm -hmm. and a stranger way to survive mm -hmm. than what is there. But once they get used to it, they are very happy. Uh, are they being assisted on the other side? They must be assisted, yes. We have uh, been able to detect when someone is coming through mm -hmm. and there will be assistance for them when they make it. Uh-huh. <clears throat> I should say they will make assistance. We can detect it from here if we okay. are monitoring it. Okay. Because we can monitor that kind of thing. <clears throat> However, I personally do not monitor it I okay. have little interest on those okay. that are coming in, except to know that they are, will be doing all right. Uh, what culture, what spiritual practices uh, accelerate the transition? Uh, how, people, how do people prepare for the shift? The Tibetan culture with the monks there have a great deal of understanding right but yet they it is not they that go through the quickest but they they do happen to have a great deal of people on in the fourth dimension so what also people, which people pop in right now from which cultures mostly from native american indians that have kept their culture pure and the aborigines of australia so, currently, the, that, that transition is done mostly by those people, right? Correct. The aboriginals <laughs> from Australia seem to be the quickest to come through. <coughs> Are, would any of the light workers of Western type make it currently? Yes. But only those that are not soiled by the negativity of society. Uh-huh. Um, are any families coming through? Any what? Families. Do families go in at once? It's very, very, very rare. Sometimes one or two members of the family may go, but it's rare to see an entire family move to the fourth dimension. I'm more talking about lovers. A short period of time. I'm talking more about couples of people. Couples, every now and then. Okay. Uh, so, do the people get citizenship or something when they arrive? Citizenship is not an issue. <laughs> they are part of the fourth dimension and part of the all that is. So they're free to go in a galaxy anywhere? They are free to be who they want to be. Now, it takes some time for them to acclimate to the fourth dimension. Mm -hmm. With this, then you understand that it takes a little time for them to learn mm -hmm. how to move about properly and easily. So if someone wants to travel the galaxy, they're free to go? They are free if they wish. Does it actually happen? There are occasions, but most decide to stay with the population. Wow. So current population is largely Pleiadian, Yael, and uh, third dimensional humans who made the transition? There are other species there as well, but those are the majorities. How many are reptilians? About 5%. How many are draconians? About 2%. Ah. 
Thank you. I ran out of time, but the conversation was very helpful. We discovered a layer of um, knowledge which was, we weren't aware of that. At least I wasn't aware much of that. So thank you very much for... Um, it is one perception of it, yes. This is how I perceive it and how it is written about in my culture. So therefore, yes, this is one perception of it. I'm sure there, there are other perceptions. Okay perhaps similar to this, or perhaps very different, oh, yeah. depending on where they are looking at and how they are experiencing it. Excellent. Uh, our last, last question. So do you have like news about Earth? Is there like something like television or some sort of updates about? There is always news about your planet because it is such a writhing culture. Uh-huh. And so, therefore, there is always something interesting about your culture to read about. So, how many errors are following? Errors are following. Many. Probably several million. Uh, can you give a percent? Pardon? Can you give a, a, a relative ratio? A percent of 21. errors? 21.4%. Uh, an estimate would suffice. Okay. So... About every fifth Aaron follows Earth culture, and what were the latest news? The what? latest news is about your presidency, uh -huh. also about ISIL, also about the Russians, how they are moving to take over this area in some ways. Oh, I was thinking that there are some other kinds of news which are of importance. Which Oh, yes. Uh -huh. There are also those news things about people that have done extraordinary things in the fourth dimensional earth and uh -huh. the third dimensional earth. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, I ran out of time, but thank you very much. And it was very uh, helpful. Can you spell your name so we can pub? Is it okay to publish your, your interview? Yes. How do you pronounce it there? I don't know. Can you spell your name again? <laughs> E I H. I would not even know how to spell it. E I H A I E. Can you say it? Well, on your planet, it is almost impossible. Um, can but go ahead and write that. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, your, your pronunciation of it, I tried to pronounce, pronounce it when I first came in, but that was incorrect as well. Okay. But it is all right. A name, just put a name on it. All right. Do you have a, a symbol which you could, uh, a nickname which you could take? Call me Era. Yeah. Are you male or female? Not Era, but Era. Okay. Are you male or female? I am male. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, have a good day, Era. Thank you. Be well. Thank you. It was interesting speaking to you, Earth person. What is your name? Max. Mix. Max. Max. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I will write it in my journal. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay, that was interesting. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. <laughs>